Rahmi Ilma ini siapa ya? Karena masih connecting. Fasil. Oh, Uh, mungkin boleh diterima sekarang aja kali ya udah. Ini udah jam 11 nih. Udah pada ngangkat. Sambil nungguin yang telat-telat aja kita uh, intro aja. <tuh> Hi everyone, hello. Can you guys turn on your camera? Hi Redira, Rinaldi, Dia, Sylvie. Oh, that's all right. If you cannot turn on your camera, that's all right. Oke, okay. welcome to Bintan Class. Um, I hope you guys are all doing just fine and thank you for joining us uh, today. <laughs> okay, so um, how are you guys doing? How is your fasting? If you're doing fasting, would anyone like to share? No? <laughs> How about uh, Rinaldi? Hi Rinaldi. Hello Miss. Hi. Um, is this your first time here? Uh, yes, of course. Oh, okay. All right. Welcome to Bridgeton. I hope you are uh, enjoy the class, ya. Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> Just call me Vira, everyone. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. This is for at school. I feel like I'm at school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, nice to meet you guys all. So, um, just to give you a brief uh introduction. Um, welcome to Bridge Zone. This is uh, our Saturday uh fun meeting, and uh, today we're gonna have a session about uh IELTS listening class. Um, but before we do that, we have a mini game for you guys to warm up and get to know each other. Um, so I hope you guys can turn on your camera, but if you cannot, that's uh, completely fine. Okay. Um, the game is gonna be uh, led by our Fasil Aldi Sepiadi. Hi Aldi. Hello Kafira. Hi, uh, Zoners. Good morning. Uh, before afternoon, yeah. All right. So, uh, right now, uh, without further ado, I will lead. Uh, the ice breaking, yeah. It's uh, it takes several minutes before we start our presentation by our speaker today. So, uh, the ice breaking is would you rather? So, which is uh, you will be given a, a two statement and you have to pick one, and I will ask you why. Okay, the first statement is I will send the statement to the chat box, you can see it by yourself. Okay, first statement is, first question is, would you rather have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts or for everyone you know to have access to your internet story, history? So uh, I will give you 10 seconds. One, to choose one. Okay, would you rather have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts or for everyone you know to have access to your internet story? So which one uh, do you pick, yeah? All right, so I'm gonna pick randomly one person to answer uh, this first question, okay? Okay, I think 10 seconds is up. 
I will pick uh, Kakenzi. Hello, mm -hmm. Kenzi. Uh, hello, Mr. Okay. Aldi or so I call you Fasil. I just call me Aldi. That's fine. All right, mm -hmm. Kenzi, which one do you pick? Well, I prefer, I prefer people to be able to read my thoughts instead of my internal history because, yeah, let's say like, for a thought, I only have the, the thing that I'm thinking at that particular time, right? Or sometimes when I try to remember it again, like for nostalgia, but for internet history, it except if you delete it it stays forever and yeah it's a little bit longer than the thoughts that i have at the moment so i mean if possible i don't want people to be able to read my mind and also access my internet history but it, if i have to pick them out yeah i say yeah you can read my thoughts like all right so the first one is better yeah than the second one yeah for me yeah <laughs> all right okay thank you so much Ka, uh Kenzi, for the answer i'm all gonna right. pick one yeah. more person uh how about nita kanita yes okay mm. which one do you pick i think uh everyone for everyone know you know to have access to your internet story because if uh, everyone know my talk I think it will be uh, really hard because I have really many talk about the people. All right. All yes. Right. So you, you, you choose the opposite one than Kenzie's. Yeah? Yes. So the second one. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Let's jump to the second questions. Okay. I'm going to send it to the chat box. Okay. The question is, would you rather give up air conditioning and heating for the rest of your life or uh, give up the internet for the rest of your life oh this is a tough uh, option yeah the, the tough uh, choice yeah. all right so i'll give you 10 seconds uh, from now to pick one All right. How about uh, Yano, Kayano? Hello, Kayano? Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, which one do you pick? The first one or the second one? Without air conditioning or without internet? Uh, I think I, I choose without air conditioning because yeah, I can... I can live in my kosan with without uh, air conditioning. All right. So even right now you uh stay in your room without air conditioning. So it is okay for you. Yeah. If, uh, it, uh, it, uh, for me, it's it can uh I can I can live without uh air conditioning. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. okay. How about um, Kareza? Okay. Kareza? Hello. Okay. Kareza, which one do you pick? The first one or the second one? Man, I definitely cannot live without internet. Okay. Without internet. Why? No, I mean, I cannot live with it without internet, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, you, you, so you can live uh, without a conditioning? Yep. All right, so you pick the second one. Yeah, the second one. All right. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the answer. So, guys, I think that's all for uh, the ice breaking. Hope you guys enjoy uh, the next... Uh, part of our class today. Thank you so much. And I'll give it back to Casafina. Thank you. 
Okay, all right. Thank you, Aldi. Uh, okay, so um, before we start the material, I'm just gonna have a quick announcement of our Bridge Zone program. Uh, before that, Kak Fika, can you help me share the screen? Thank you. All right, so um, once again, uh, for the newcomers, Helen, uh, good day. For those of you who don't really know about us, Bridge Zone is a non-profit organization, so it's completely free. Focusing on English education and young empowerment, which is powered by so many inspiring committees and conductors who are all volunteers. So uh, Bridge Zone is an open platform where everyone from various backgrounds can just come and join us to practice. Um, not only Bridge Zone's class is free of charge, but uh, we are also trying to our best to make Bridge Zone a place that is free of judgment. Our main program consists of uh, two classes a week. Okay, uh, can you uh, go to the next one, uh, Kavika? Yeah, so the first one is Bridge Zone Tuesday class. Every Tuesday, we've got uh, offline classes, uh, but uh, during Ramadan, we have uh, one online classes and uh, usually starts at um, not 7 p.m. everyone, but uh, 11 a.m. until when, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, 7 p.m focuses on enhancing speaking skills through a wide uh, range of topics. Uh, the next one. And this is uh, our class for today, Bridge Zone Fun Day class. Uh, we, held it, uh, we hold it every Saturday offline and starts at 11 a.m. And uh, we bring various fun topics to discuss. Next one, Kavika. And uh, we've also got our very special outdoor class. Uh, we hold it once a month on Saturday. And uh, in this uh, event, we have the opportunity to learn English uh, outside of a classroom like cafe, museum, nature, and et cetera. The next one, Kat. Ka. All right, so um, if you uh, want to uh, support us, you can follow on our social media page uh, in Instagram at Bridge on ID. Uh, we also have a YouTube account, a Bridge on English Community, Twitter at Bridge on ID, uh, Bridge on English Community. Uh, our website is at bridgezone.id and our Spotify podcast at Bridge on's podcast. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that's all, Ka Afika. Thank you. So um, without further ado, let's uh, get to our main event, which is our uh, session with Kak Novita. Uh, Kak Novita, are you ready to share the material? Sure, yes. Uh, I guess someone will share the material. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone will share it for you. Thank you. Well, let's hear Kanovita. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear my voice clearly? If yes, please uh, say yes on the chat box. So let me know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, it's really sunny here in Smarang. Uh, where do you come from, guys? Is it sunny, cloudy, or rainy in your place? Sunny, okay. Wow. Hilang says sunny. Good. Oh, quiet, hot. Yes, it's really hot. I think it's dry season is coming. Bandung, sunny, hot. Yes, Sadla, thank you. Cloudy, Hilda. Wow, humid. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Jakarta, sunny, and hot. Yeah. In Samarang, too. Scorching, good, wow, awesome. Okay, so uh, as has been mentioned with the moderator that we're, today we're going to talk a little bit about IELTS listening. Uh, have you taken IELTS before, guys? Anyone? Mm -hmm, I wanna hurt some, okay. Not yet, Shala, okay, Nilam, not yet. Okay, Penalty, just some mock test. Whoa, that's great. I did. Okay, good, Rami. Okay, so 
Before we start, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. Can you please go to the next slide? Yeah, next slide, please. Okay, uh, my name is Novita Setiawati. You can call me Novita. I'm from Semarang. Uh, I'm an English teacher. I graduated from Universitas Negeri Semarang, English department in 2016. I took IELTS uh, in 2014 and I got seven. For those who had a mock test or even had, had taken IELTS test before, can I know your band score? Yeah, okay. Uh, Rahmi, you want to say something about your test? Yeah, Rafika, wow. Yeah, can anyone share a little bit uh, experience about their test? Rafika, Rafika maybe? Yeah, sublime, okay. Okay, yeah. Hello, Kak, sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my experience. So I just took it uh, in this February uh, because I want to pursue my master degree as well and I've been learning for the whole IELTS preparation for about three months I guess yep and how was yeah. the result the result I think it was good enough like same as you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got I got seven as well uh, great the highest score uh, was for listening, listening and reading. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. But, that's great. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, I've joined a course before join the before join the IELTS class. However, mm -hmm. for the speaking, it was supposed to be my most confident part, mm -hmm. but I didn't hit the you know the question correctly mm -hmm. because I didn't pay attention enough. So mm -hmm. uh, if I may to give a suggestion for the mm -hmm. others, I think we should hit the task response to uh, get the highest score, the higher score. Yes. Yeah. yes, I do agree with you, Rafika. Thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, in IELTS um, test, we should be uh, focused. Concentration is number one, you know, in not only in listening, reading, but writing, speaking, we should focus. Or if you're not focusing enough, yeah, you will lose a lot of things. Yeah, you will lose your time, you will lose your mark. So that's not the thing you want, right? Okay, so uh, let's go without any further ado. I think let's go to the session. Yeah, uh, before you take any IELTS test, um, I suggest you to get to know it, yeah, to familiarize yourself with the IELTS test. What is IELTS test? How's the question? What should you do? What kind of test you will have? Uh, do you have to take the test in a day or will you have the other day? For example, because as I know, um, there, are, there are some sessions that require speaking tests in other days. So it's not gonna be in the, uh, the same day as listening, reading, and writing. So you really need to know, know your battle, know your enemy. So you will hit the highest, the highest score and you will ace the IELTS. Okay, next please. As we are talking about listening tests, um, you should know how long will the test uh, go? In listening, we have 40 minutes in total, 30 minutes for listening and 10 minutes uh, for transfer time. Uh, okay, as a little question, do you know uh, that there are two kinds of uh, IELTS? Anyone know what are they? Two kinds of IELTS? Anyone know? Okay, okay, let's see, someone, academic and general, yes. Okay, good, but there, there are others 
other thing. Yeah, the way we do the test. Paper and computer, good. Yes. Uh, in paper, the time allotment will be 40 minutes. But in computer, we do not have uh, the transfer time. So it's only just listening. Because uh, we can type directly the answer uh, on the field provided. And then next, uh, we will have 40 questions in total. Yeah, both paper and computer. Uh, there are four parts with ten questions each, and the answers will appear in order. So you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, confuse when will the answer will appear in the audio, because you just follow the audio, and stay focused. Next, please. Yeah. Aside. From the times and the question, you have to know uh, in the test what will you see and what will you uh, encounter. For example, in section one or part one, you will hear a conversation between two people about a general topic. I think this is the easiest, and almost everyone can nail it. Yeah. Uh, the part two, second session, uh, you will hear a monologue. Uh, or a, a monologue uh, on a general topic with a transactional purpose, such as giving information about events of the community. On the third section, you will have a conversation between two, three people, maximum four people, in an academic context, like asking information about uh, lectures, about schedule uh, in academy or in the university. Uh, the last part, I think this is the hardest part because it's a monologue and it you will hear some uh, scientific uh, you know terms. Yeah, it's unfamiliar to us. It's not like everybody and uh, not everyday uh, vocabularies. Yeah, it's an academic context, like for example, a lecture. So you need to be very, very focused in this section. Next, please. In IELTS test, uh, we need to uh, be uh, really, really careful in reading the instruction because uh, this instruction play a huge part in determining whether you hit the correct answer or not. Okay, next please. Because IELTS is different. It's different compared to TOEFL. In TOEFL, for example, like with TOEFL ITP, you just you just cross the answer. Uh, the options are provided. You just listen. You read the questions. You listen to the audio, and then you read the options. You just cross one of them. But in listening, uh, IELTS listening, it's different. You have to figure uh, the answer out by yourself. Yeah, and there is limitation. Uh, usually written in the instruction, like for example here, write no more than two words and or a number. So in this instruction, you can write one word, the answer can be one word, or two words, or one number, or one word and a number, for example, like 17, 7 million, 24 cats, or two words and a number. Next, please. You need to know how the words and numbers are calculated. Yeah. Okay. For example, a day like 1945 is considered as one number. A large number like 1,500,000 is, is considered as one word. A hyphenated word like part time, you know, there is a hyphen there, is considered as one word. Like, for example, uh, 22 year old girl if you hyphen the 22 year old and then you give a space and then you uh, write girl it will be counted as two words and then a compound noun which is not hyphenated yeah you have a space between the words is considered as two words okay next please and also uh in IELTS uh, listening, there is no such thing as contraction. So if you say 
or if you write cam with C A M, uh, and then you just give apostrophe and then you write T, that's that won't be the answer, you know, because IELTS never never test you on the construction. Okay, this I think this is the most important question. Uh, the most important thing you need to know about the question types. What kind of question types uh, are you going to encounter during your IELTS uh, listening session? Okay, there are some, I think it's about like um, seven. Yeah, okay, seven types. Like for example, the notes, summary, completion, table, completion. Uh, what do you have to do is to complete the note to complete the summary with the suitable word or words with the word limited limit given. Yeah, so like for example, uh, write no more than one word and or a number, for example. Okay, it will be the multiple choice. You will see the multiple choice. You can, uh, you need to choose one answer from the alternatives or you need to choose two answers. So you need to be very, very careful in reading the instruction. Okay, guys, um, from these uh, question types, which one do you think will be the easiest to answer? Okay, anyone want to share? What do you think? What do you think is the easiest? Is that short answer, a short answer, sentence completion? Sentence completion, okay, Fira, okay, anyone? Sentence completion, okay, it's nice. Maybe anyone want to share? Mm, no, wait, how about Rinaldi? What do you think, Rinaldi? What do you think is the easiest uh, question from uh, these question types? Oh, multiple choice, yeah, yeah. Maybe I think multiple choice is the easiest. Let's see, yeah. Okay, let's see uh, them in detail. Okay, next please. Okay, so we're gonna talk about uh, the first question type. It's note or summary or table or flowchart completion. Mostly you will encounter uh, this kind of question in part one. Okay, so you gotta listen for specific information. Usually you have to um, Fill the gap uh, with the name yeah, of the speaker, the date, the time, places, or numbers. So most of the time, uh, the speaker is going to spell their names or uh, street name or even uh, university name. Yeah, so if you are not really good at spelling, you should learn spelling very, very well. And then also you will hear the speaker talking about some numbers. I think uh, I see some of my friends are having problem with, uh, you know, pronouncing numbers or even listening to numbers. Yeah, so a lot of exercise is needed in here. And then uh, you really have to in, uh, read the instruction and you will be provided like 10 seconds to uh, read the question before the audio begins. Answers must be taken directly from from the audio, so you don't have to um, change uh, the answer. I mean, like what you hear is exactly the answer. You don't need to change anything. Okay. Next, please. We're going to see the example of uh, this kind of question. Yes, as you can see here. Okay, this is part one. Question number one to eight. Okay, here is the instruction, write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. Okay, just uh, look through it very quickly. Okay, how about number one? Uh, is it, what is it going to be the answer? Can anyone guess? Yeah, someone can guess. Maybe Almira, want to guess? Number one, what is the answer about? Yeah, Amira, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. What do you think? What do you think number one will be about? Mm. 
But I still confused. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I think it's Jack Jacob name or oh, family. Yeah, yes. I think that. Yeah, say family yes. name. Yes, yes, family name. Good job. Thank you, Almira. Thank you, Dia. Yes, because you can see here name Jacob blah 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 for number one. Of course, it's gonna be family name. Yeah, the speaker is going to spell his name, so you have to be ready. And then address to be collected from blah 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 college. How about number two? Can anyone know what kind of thing you will hear? Is is it gonna be spelling, or is it gonna be numbers? Okay, how about Nada? Do you want to answer it? Um, it will be a word, a place. Yes, yes, it's a word. It's going to be a word, a place. Yeah, good job. Thank you very much. Okay, the last one, postcode. That's the keyword. Number three, what do you think it's going to be about? Is it going to be a spelling or a number? number? Yes, thank you. That's great. Number, it's going to be number. Yeah, so you know, you pick the keyword. You read the you read the question. You pick the keyword, then you can predict what kind of thing will you hear in the listening in the audio. Good job, everyone. Okay, let's move to the next slide. You will see uh, another kind of uh, question that is multiple choice. I think this is gonna be uh, the easiest too because. Uh, you know, the answer is provided. The question is cr uh, crystal clear, but but thing you need to be very careful about is uh, you will hear some kind of fake answer in this kind of question. You know, uh, if you are still confused about what fake answers are gonna be like, so I will be talking about it on the next slide. We usually uh multiple choice is on the part one. Uh, of course, you need to read the question and options. Yeah, don't forget the instructions as well, whether you have to choose one or two answers. Uh, be ready for any synonym or paraphrase. Yeah, because IELTS is also testing whether you have a wide range of vocabulary or not. So uh, yeah, of course, it will uh, not just directly, uh, you know, give the answer to you. That's why you need to be careful, be very careful with fake answers. Next, please. We'll see the examples, yeah. Okay, next, please. Okay, for question number nine, yeah. Uh, the question is asking you uh, to answer what kind of or type of insurance chosen by the speaker. So in this in this section or in this part, you will hear dialogue, uh, and then about a, a between A and B here. I think A is the customer. I'm sorry, yeah. A is the customer service, and B is a customer. So you will see that there are three things: economy, standard, and premium. Okay, let's read it together. A says, uh, "Yeah, sorry. Um, there are there's really three rates according to quality insurance cover." There is the highest comprehensive cover, which is premium rate. Then there's standard rate and there is economy rate. You will see that uh, the speaker is using rate instead of type. That is what I mean with uh, synonym. Okay, so be careful with it. And then uh, the B, you know, the speaker, the B speaker, uh, is uh, answering with, oh, I've been stung before with economy insurances, so I'll go for the highest. Okay, the customer, the other speaker is not uh, saying directly what the answer is, but instead uh, he used the highest as to refer to the, uh, to the word, to the type, of insurance chosen. So what do you think it's going to be the answer for number nine? Okay, let's pick one. How about Ethan? Ethan, can you guess what is the answer? Steve? Yes, Nita. Premium, premium. Okay, good. Fika, yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah, that is C, premium, because it's the highest. 
Okay. Yeah. How about fake answer that you have to be very careful about? Uh, just see in the high circle with green. Yeah, the speaker said, oh, I've been stung before with the economy insurances. So if you're not careful enough, you will choose economy insurance instead of uh, instead of premium. Yeah, so you have to be patient and, and focus and listening because there may be some, there are maybe some fake answers. Okay, next. We will have a short answer question. Yeah, of course, you need to read the instruction first. It's a must. And five keywords from each question as a signpost. Yeah, it's going to be easier for you if you know the keyword. Also, answers comes, uh, answer come directly from the audio. Okay, you don't need to change anything. Next, please. Yeah, we'll see the examples. Uh, okay, it's a little bit boring. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, the instruction, write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. Okay, so uh, here, here's the thing. Yeah, you have to answer number 11 to number 16. Can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. It's about sentence completion. Uh, okay, but before I continue, uh, there will be Azan voice because uh, my house is near to next to the mosque. Uh, can you still hear my voice clearly? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Uh, we will have sentence completion as the next type. We will talk about, of course, you need to read the instruction first. And then think about the parts of speech you will need for the answer. For example, is it going to be, going to be a noun, a verb, or uh, an adjective? Be careful with synonym and paraphrase. Okay, we'll see the question, the example of the question. Can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, this is the example. The instruction is right, no more than two words for each answer. Okay, for example, we'll see uh, question number 27. Studying with the Open University demanded a great deal of what? Is it going to be a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Yeah, can you guess, guys? One of you. Maybe Annie, can you guess what is it going to be about? Yeah, good. Thank you, Nada. Is that a noun? Yes, of course, it's going to be a noun. After all, we will have a noun. For number 28, uh, studying and working at the same time improved Rachel's blah, blah, blah skills. Is it going to be a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Nada said adjective. Okay. Is there any other answer? Adjective only? Do you think, guys? Time management, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, for this part, for number 29, it can be an adjective or it can be a noun. So it can be a compound noun. Yeah, it can be a noun and it can be an adjective. Okay, how about number 29? Yes, number 29 is a noun. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Yeah, next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, yeah, we'll see uh, an example of a synonym, uh, of synonym here. So uh, you will hear in the audio, you will hear that Rachel mentioned a high level of, but uh, in the question, uh, the question used a great deal of as a synonym. So you have to be aware of it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Next, let's go. 
to the next slide. You will uh, you'll also see a task that asks you to label a diagram, plan, or map. So first you need to read the instruction very carefully, whether you have to write the letters or the words. And then you have to look at a diagram, plan, or map before the audio begins. Yeah, it's really, really important. And to answer it, uh, you don't have to be confused because you have to, you just have to follow the diagram. Okay, next, next we'll see the example. Here, okay, in answering this question, uh, read the instruction first, that you just have to write the letters. Yeah, whether it's A, B, C, D, or any other little I. And then to answer this question, you uh, have to start from 11. Yeah, so the audio, the audio will, uh, you know, will start from the, from librarian desk and then go to 11 and then go to 12, 13, not 13 directly, but fiction, nonfiction, and then 13, so in our room, 14, 15, and then the last is the library office. That's how uh, the audio will uh, say about this part. Next. Okay, I think this is the last uh, question type. It's classification or matching. Yeah, in this section or in this type, you will read the question and the matching options. The information on the recording will be in the same order as the questions. So it's like the previous uh, question types. Pay attention to keywords and paraphrases, of course. Be careful with false answer. Next, please. Okay, so this is the example of classification or matching. Uh, you will have three options, A, B, C, and then you have to uh, write the correct letter, whether question number 21 will be A, B, or C. Yeah, so you will have to listen for details. Okay, so next, please. Okay, this is another example of classification or matching question type. So you have more options here, A to E. Uh, and also you have one to, five, one to four as the thing describing about the options. Yeah, so it's really advisable for you to uh, read the options first and then go, go to the question. Okay, next please. After you know about the question types, the time, also uh, the number of questions you're going to answer is really important to know um, how your answer is going to be scored. So for example, if you want to go uh, abroad for study, for studying, uh, you need band eight, for example. Yeah, so you need to answer 35 to 36 uh, questions correctly. If you're uh, aiming lower, like band seven is enough, then you have to answer 30 to 31 uh, questions correctly. Yeah, so it's gonna help you when you're doing exercises. Next, please. Okay, to sum everything up, yeah, uh, for me, myself, I will suggest everyone who wants uh, to take IELTS test to take a pre-test first. Mock test, pre-test, everything is okay. As long as you know your position, what you're at, well, what is your plan, uh, what, what is your aim, what are you aiming, okay? And then uh, little by little, progressing by doing some kind of exercising, monitor your progress, just write down how many uh, questions you answer correctly, how is your band, uh, and then slowly you build up your listening skill. Also, uh, I advise you to use all capital letters when answering the question. 
yeah, it's going to help you to avoid some kind of misunderstanding. And then uh, spelling is really important, of course. Plural answers, yes, S or, or ES, because IELTS know uh, that uh, English learners are having some kind of difficulty disappearing between the plural and singular. So that is uh, going to be tested on IELTS listening. Uh, be ready for the speaker to change the answer that what I uh, said about the fake answer. And then answers might be a paraphrase. Yeah, you need to know the synonym, of course. Read the instruction and questions very carefully before you start the before the audio start or you start to answer the questions okay next next please yeah okay next on the next slide um uh, these are the links you can use for um doing exercise if you're in, uh, if you're aiming for a paper format, yeah, you can use uh, the IELTS.org website. There will be uh, some uh, sample sample test questions. Uh, you will you'll not only having the question but also the transcript you know transcript for the listening part, and also uh, you will have some kind of answers there. Yeah, you can also download uh, the, you know, the answer sheet for you to practice. Uh, take IELTS.British Council also pro uh, provides you with uh, free IELTS practice. And then if you want to take computer format, you can go to www.ielts.org and you can uh, click the IELTS online. Yeah, familiarization with tests and try the test. Next. Yeah, I have, uh, this is my favorite quote from Sun Tzu, the, uh, from the art of war. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know where you're at now, what your listening ability now, and you know your IELTS, you, familiar, uh, you familiarize yourself with IELTS stuff, I think you don't need to worry about you know, your IELTS result. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any question, just feel free to ask me. Yeah, I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Kanavita. Wow, that is a very comprehensive IELTS listening guidelines from uh, Kanavita. So um, I'm sure we all have got very useful tips and like the know-how on how to uh, study for IELTS uh, listening ourselves, okay. like um, knowing the question types and then focus, read the instruction and do a lot of practices. Okay, so um, everyone now we've got uh, several minutes for the Q&A uh, session. Okay, so um, if you would like to uh, ask questions to our conductor, please raise your hand. We're going to open the slots for um, three people. So raise your hand, uh, the sticker one, if you would like to ask questions. Okay, we've got Reza. Uh, only Reza? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, oh, can we cheat yeah, for the second one and the third one? Okay, uh, the third one is uh, coming up later. Uh, Reza, can you please uh, turn on your mic and then ask the question yourself? Right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Reza. Hello. I want to ask you about the IELTS test. Is there any is there any accent preference on the test? Okay. Thank you, Reza. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the question. That's very good. Uh, actually, there is no preferred accent. You can use any accent you want, whether it be it American, British, Australian, New Zealand if you can, or if you go, want to go with India, or 
yeah, if you're Japanese like me, want to be like a little bit in English with medok medok, medok medok accent is gonna be okay as long as the key is like here. In speaking, the key is you answer the task, you hit the question, uh, you can convey your ideas clearly so that the examiner knows what you want to say. Yeah, so pronunciation is the thing, not the accent. The accent is just like the spice. The thing is the pronunciation and the idea. It's about you, not just about uh, the accent. And of course, do not try to use like, uh, usually I found some of my friends are trying to use uh, big words, you, you know, words that is not familiar. But if you cannot use the word uh, at the right place, at the right time, it's going to make your score lower. So focus on your ideas and focus on the pronunciation. That's going to be helpful, I think. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Um, uh, we hope that that answers your question, yeah, Riza. All right. So for the second question, we've got a question from Duchita on the chat box. Uh, he says, hello, Kak Novita. Could you tell us about the rate of the TOEFL and IELTS difficulties? One to zero for listening section. For instance, TOEFL is seven and IELTS is nine or maybe equal. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think both of them are different. They're, they're not, they're not sibling. <laughs> they're different. They're different. But difficulties may vary, you know. Uh, I prefer IELTS compared to TOEFL because it's more like, you know, fully uh, test your ability. But most of the people will say like IELTS difficulty, it's about like eight to nine, but you don't, don't need to worry. I think you don't need to worry as long as you, you prepare yourself. Okay. And also uh, most of the time uh, I heard TOEFL are using American accent. But uh, in IELTS, you will, you will hear some accents, you know, like it can be British, it can be American, it can be Australian. But most of the time, I think it's about it's British and Australian. But I think that's okay, you know, it's not really hard because it's unnatural. It's not something like you see on the Netflix. No, it's natural. It's really complicated in Netflix. But in IELTS, it's really slow. And no, not really slow, but slower and it's clear, so you can keep up with the audio. I, I hope that answers your question, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Kak Novita. And the last question is from uh, Kak Reza Rifki. Uh, Kak Reza, would you like to unmute yourself? Okay, uh, thank you for the chance. Uh, thank you, Kak Novita, for, uh, oh, I think it's really helpful. Uh, the question is how sometimes for me it's hard to convey the information uh, about the writing test yeah, in our in in my mind into the paper. So how the tips yeah, for conveying the idea is more beautifully, I think. And and the number two is how to maybe tips. I had uh, I have. Uh, Difficulties in writing, spelling, sometimes I typo at A or E. And what is, what is the tips for it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I just want to wanna confirm. The first thing, the first is about writing, right? Yeah. Is that? About yes. Writing? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And the second is about spelling. Uh, yeah. Uh. Okay. Thank you for the question. That's really great. Uh, in writing, how to convey our ideas? Mm, okay. Just write. Just write. First, write everything in your mind. Don't try to make it perfect because it's going to cost you a lot of time making something perfect. There's nothing perfect in this world. Just convey your ideas. Just write. Every day you write something. You write. Mm, in islands, it, I forgot the word counted. Maybe it's like a 150 and 250. Uh, the thing is, first write something. Just convey. Try to convey your ideas. Try to 
put it in the paper on the paper and ask your friend one of your friends to read it how did they think about it can they can they understand uh your writing and then uh that's the first thing practicing practice practice and practice second to refine your practice uh you need to know how a writing is constructed yeah it's like a burger you know there are buns the up in the bottom and then you will see the ham the up is the introduction you will see the introduction and then in the middle you will have uh the body and then you will have the conclusion in the end yeah so you have to uh, be able to construct your ideas your uh, your ideas into those three parts like introduction you tell you give some kind of um you know a little bit opening about what you want to say if you're going to mention three ideas in the body you mention it first in the introduction and then one by one you talk about the the ideas in the body in the body you can make it into if you want to say about three things yeah then you can make it as a three paragraphs uh do learn about topic sentence you know state what you want to say what you want to have in mind yeah what you have in mind uh in a sentence called topic sentence and then you can explain it or elaborate it on the next other sentence and then give it a, give it an example just okay like for instance for example one paragraph will be like three sentences yeah one topic sentence one explaining and then one uh example then you go to the next top point or not next thing you want to say and then you go to the next and then you wrap everything up in the conclusion that's a, that's the thing so so the first is practice second you know how to construct the ideas yeah it's like editing your ideas okay yeah i think that that that's about writing first and the second uh it's about spelling okay um uh, do you like do you like listening to music or uh watching movies uh watching movies watching movies okay watching what movies. is your favorite movie uh the avatar 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 okay the avatar the blue one the blue 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 the blue one okay <laughs> okay so my tip is gonna be like uh you have how many times have you watched avatar two times oh, okay twice wow that's great <laughs> yeah. so it means that you already understand the plot the story so you can uh like you know okay after this it's going to be like this like this like this okay my suggestion is change the subtitle into english okay try to listen and match you know the audio what they say what the characters are saying with the subtitle then turn the subtitle off okay so uh every time there is an interesting word okay you can just write you can just write Okay, just guess. For uh, the theory or differentiating between A, I, E, it's, it's the hardest part, I know everyone does. Uh, you can, okay, you can, you can write those letters. Yeah, you can write, you know, words that contain those letters, you know, and record yourself. Or okay, I'll, I'll make it okay. I will make it easier. You go to Cambridge Dictionary online. Uh, you choose some words that has um those letters. You know the vocal, the vowel letters, A, I, E, and then you hit the audio button. You just and then write. Just try to write it. Okay, I think it's gonna be help you a little. Okay, I hope it answered your question. Yeah, thank you, Kak Novita. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you, Kak Novita, for the answers. Um, yes. Everyone, I know that um, we've got several questions uh, who haven't been answered, but uh, because of the time limitation, you guys can uh, reach out to 
uh, Kak Novita through her Instagram at Novita Lingua, right, Kak Novi? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you can find the um, her Instagram account on uh, Bridgestone's post on Instagram as well. Okay. Um, for the next session, we're gonna do a photo session. So everyone, please turn on your camera, put on your big smile. Okay. Hi everyone, let's turn on your camera if you can. Yeah. Okay, Sylvie, Yiyin, Dwi, Cipta, Rivaldo. Wait. Wait. Um. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, Okay, I think the host is gonna help us taking the picture, right? Yeah, done. Everyone smile in three, two, one. All right, very good. Well, once more, once more. One more, okay. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. Now for the session that we have all been waiting for is our FGD uh, session. So we've got around um, 20 minutes. Yeah, is it 20? Yeah, around 20 minutes for us to talk about uh, some questions related to the material. And uh, we're gonna put you guys into breakout room. So if you've got the invitation, please uh, accept the invitation. Okay, I think everyone has gone to their breakout room. Um, by the way, that was a really um, useful uh, like guides, kind of guides and tips that you have given us, Kanovita, because I myself am uh, I'm preparing for the IELTS um, test after Lebaran. So listening to your class is really useful for me. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, uh, you're welcome. I'm uh, very ha happy to help you. I hope you can hit the score you need. What band do you need? I I am aiming for, um, uh, yeah, it, I'm aiming for eight point five because I'm also a teacher like you, Kanovi, an English teacher. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> That's great. You do want to go abroad? What is it? Do you want to go abroad? Something you're um, studying? It's just something that I've been wanted to do for quite a long time. I mean, it's, wow. bit, yeah. As a teacher, it's kind of like, um, you know. Dreams. Uh, it's dreams. Uh, yeah. uh, it's to, dreams. To get the certification. Mm -hmm. I think uh, all teachers need that. So let's talk about you, Kanovita. How long have you been a teacher? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, in the formal education, I've been, uh, it's, it's almost six years. Formal education, education is almost six years. But informally, I've been teaching since I was in college, you know, like doing private tutoring. Yeah, so maybe it's like about eight or nine. It's quite a long, quite a long time. How about you? Um, yeah, <laughs> me too. But I, um, uh, I graduated, uh, just a few years after you, so around four to five years of, um, of uh, teaching experience. Okay, so you've, uh, is that how long you've been teaching IELTS, or is that like uh, just the general uh, teaching experience? Uh, for IELTS, you mean only for IELTS? 
uh, I'm not teaching IELTS uh, for like, uh, you know, for my students, but I like, I like IELTS. So I share some, some of my knowledge related to IELTS on my Instagram, you know, just love it, then just share it. But you sound so like um like very uh well informed and like not knowledgeable about it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know, like um talking to a lot of people about the thing about IELTS, you need to prepare, <laughs> you need to read a lot of things. Yeah. Uh all of what I said is coming one from my experience as a taste taker, you know, and then second is from the books and also the web, the IELTS web is really helpful. So if you want to take the IELTS test, I suggest you to check the official official web. It's going to help you a lot. Yeah, like the one that you gave for the freebies, right? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a lot. Uh, when I was when I was taking IELTS, um, I relied only to my teacher. Yeah, she is my American lecturer. You know, like I believe in her. But then now I found that IELTS provide every information, detailed information about the test. So okay, why didn't I just check the information? It's gonna be much, much, much helpful. Mm. Yeah, actually, um, I think what happened in Indonesia is that we are like daunted in a way by the idea of like this IELTS, very expensive test with speaking yeah. and writing. And then we got, you know, um, too caught up in our uh, panic and anxiety. And then like, uh, even though, so we forgot that th there are, I think, uh, like um, countless information and then like learning on the internet that can help us even the free ones yeah. so yeah. Uh, we're just overwhelmed with people saying IELTS is going to be hard really really hard and of course when you see the cost you know it costs a dumb in the leg it's very expensive so you're just like afraid you're worried of retaking the past you know you have to uh, spend more money, like another three million. Seriously, okay. So you're not concentrating, not focusing on on the goal, on the task itself. But you just feeling like, okay, how if I fail? How if you have failed? <laughs> okay, you miss the most important thing, right? That's what I felt too when I was taking IELTS. <laughs> I feel like I I am like a professional English teacher. I mean, like I've uh, got quite a lot of experience about this, but even for me, it took me like two years to gather the courage to like really take it, like really prepare for it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I get yeah. why it's a very interesting class for mm -hmm. um, participants and they were very eager. <laughs> I'm sure they've got a very fun times in the breakout room, you know, talking mm -hmm. about their um, experiences. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought, I thought, you know, it's, it's going to be like uh, open discussion, not in breakout room. Uh, so I know what they, they think about English teaching, like it's going to be, it's going to be some kind of um, feedback. Because what I see is uh, many people are having difficulties uh, when it comes to learning English. So what's the problem? Is there any problem that we have to, uh, you know, solve really as an English teacher? Uh, and I see that the techniques used in teaching English are just still the same with the, when, with, when I was, when I was, you know, in high school, yeah, most of the time this grammar, 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 but that's not going to increase your ability to communicate, you know? Yeah, we just um I think um because we are like um at the same age, it um we are the product of uh like the traditional way of teaching uh grammar, like just just keep the drilling and then um writing and doing multiple choices questions. 
Um, so I think it um, you can really see the struggle that um, students uh, our age faces when uh, they we ask them to speak. <laughs> so, okay. Mm -hmm. um, how about yeah, yeah. your even um, even for the younger. Even for the younger what? Excuse me? Yeah, what you want to say? Oh, I'm just me. curious about mm -hmm. your um like a personal journey of learning mm -hmm. IELTS because er, um everyone has different uh, struggle and mm -hmm. a problem that they need to face, right? So I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Oh, okay. My journey, yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I took IELTS in 2014. It was like maybe seven semester. Mm, I'm still young, younger than I know. Uh, yeah, at that time, I joined a program in my department called uh, Bibinan Academic for uh, students who wanted to continue their study abroad. Uh, the chosen country was America. So we planned to, uh, you know, admit to, to you know, um, enroll, enroll ourselves. Uh, to American uh, university at the time for graduate study. So we need to take IELTS. And then uh, there was a lecturer of mine named Erica. She's an she's an American. Uh, she helped us because not only me, there are three other three other students who are joining the the program. Uh, she thought she taught us about the IELTS thing. Start with the hardest one, it's right thing, you know. I love writing, but writing for IELTS is totally different. Totally different, yeah. You the gotta first... know the, the format, right? Like even, mm -hmm. even if you're good at writing, if you've got like the structure wrong, they're, they're gonna dock up some points. Yep. And, you know, describing rough. We're not Indonesian. I will say Indonesian are not really familiar with graphs, diagram, anything. We're not paying attention to those things. So it's okay. What, what, what is this? Uh, the first mocking test I got maybe like five point five or yeah, I get like five or five point five. I forgot. Then uh, she gave uh, she gave us the pen descriptor. You know, you can get it. On the IELTS, uh, on the IELTS, IELTS uh, website, yeah, and then okay, you're aiming for six or seven. What you have to do is like this, like this, like this, okay. And then I try it again, and then I hit six or six six point five. I forgot. Then next, we go to the speaking. Speaking, it's not really like, uh, you know, it's detail. It's detail les lesson. It's just like. Okay, you need to do this. Did it just speak? Okay, and then she uh, advise us to uh, learn a lot about idiom. Idiom, so it's gonna be useful. And then we go to reading, and then the last is listening. When um uh, she talk about listening, she wasn't talking about the question types. Okay, you need to listen to podcasts every day. That's the thing she said, and then we did a mock test, and then that's okay. And then I uh, I tried to you know uh, I tried to register for the test, and I wasn't I wasn't sure that I'm going to I was going to hit seven. You know, it's just okay, just do it. Okay, whatever will be will be lah. Okay lah. And then 14 days after, I got seven. Oh my God. I never expect this to happen, but thank God. It's really good. Luck. I mean, like, um, because you, you were still a student, like in your seventh semester, but you've got that score. It was really great. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was full of disbelief, actually, you know. It's, it's like, yeah, getting seven while your peers are struggling most of the most of the time they, you know, at six, six and a half. But I got seven. Okay, one thing you should do if you're you if you want to take IELTS, uh, useful Indonesians are very good at listening and reading. Yeah, 
not that good in speaking and writing. So you can pump your score up in IELTS reading and listening. So you're aiming for overall band seven. Yeah, so you can get more from listening and reading. But don't forget with your writing and uh, speaking. That's the thing you need to know. Yeah, and with uh, reading and listening, um, it's really easy to practice because we've got like uh, the guides already, like what the steps to do, and then the practice questions and the answer key. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas in uh, writing and speaking, like you need a partner uh, mm -hmm. who knows uh, how the IELTS test goes to uh, mm -hmm. really practice right, and get feedback. And and uh, you know, scoring yourself, it's really hard in writing and speaking. In listening and reading are you know easy yeah and um uh what i uh come to find is that in um in in several um institutions uh like they provide like a writing uh service or like feedback service but um maybe it's not uh, exactly like the ielts should be yeah, so some people are, uh, can get you know um a uh, wrong idea on how uh writing in IELTS is supposed to be like so that's really like a treacherous area <laughs> about yeah. okay uh maybe from uh Dini uh do you have a oh there is a question here from the breakout group Dini uh, I heard yeah. that you were considering of taking IELTS test too, right? A few months back. Yeah. Um, how many, how, how many times do you, uh, uh, do you, uh, do you learn for taking an IELTS, uh, before taking an IELTS test? Oh, is that the question for Kak Novi? Yeah. Okay. I forgot. Because <laughs> it was <laughs> like, you know, uh, when I had my, yeah, it was, it, it was just, I'm sorry, it was just a long, long time ago, but it's not just long, you know, maybe I, I, I learned IELTS in, I took it in seven semester, I learned in six semester, so yeah, but I'm not learning on a daily basis, like once a week with my lecture, the other, the other day we practice, it's, I think it's about like, Ten meetings or something, then we had to take it on the seventh semester. That's the mm -hmm. thing I remember. Yeah, so it it's more like you know, in Indonesia we call it nekat. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> doesn't fully prepared because my lectures, uh, you know, the head of the program said, uh, yeah, you have to. Uh, the admission is getting closer. You have to take the IELTS soon. That's why, yeah, a little bit of nekat it's needed when you want to take IELTS. Yeah, I think. But how, um, uh, could you um, uh, oh yeah, take what you uh, you only take one IELTS eh, one one time and then you get the good score. Mm, I got seven. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question, Kak Novita. So, in this, in your seventh semester, you were uh, mm -hmm. required to take IELTS tests for only students. I'm sorry. Can you yes. repeat the question? In the seventh semester was it a part of the um requirement from the uh major from the university to take IELTS tests for English educate for English students? No, no. It's just for the students joining the program. There are four oh. students, only four students. So for the program, uh, we had to, because, uh, you know, for the admission for American, it was like, yeah, American University, it requires, I guess it's like six, six and a half or seven. No, no, but, but the, you know, the faculty, you know, the faculty, it's the department. My lecturer said, you need seven. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So you um pass the requirement, right? Oh, that's so great. Uh, luckily, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. Um, because I uh, in in my uni, uh, there was uh, no program like that, and there was only TOEFL tests. And I think we needed to take it uh, at our fifth semester, and that was really hard. So I cannot imagine IELTS tests at seventh semester. <laughs> yeah. But in my department, uh, I forgot what semester it was. There was a, you know, a subject called advanced reading, and that in that uh, you know, we will have uh, IELTS reading questions. So uh, yeah, you get to know some kind. Oh, this is hard. Oh, but I love it. Also, so we, we have are, listening. Mm -hmm. Else is a part of the uh, uh, the thing that you needed to learn in your uh, at uh, class. So it's yeah, because it's advanced, advanced reading, and the lecturer decided to take the IELTS as the you know the lesson, the material. This is for you to. We we are going to talk about this. Please do this, and we we will see the answer together. So yeah, actually unconsciously, I have known IELTS way before, but mm -hmm. we we don't know. We didn't know that it was IELTS. So just, okay, <laughs> this reading is really hard. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> That's all. Yeah. yeah I, can, um, I can imagine how hard uh, it was because um, mm -hmm. uh, because in a uh, university they would just um, give you practice and practice right usually okay you need to do this and this mm -hmm. so oh. mm -hmm. um, so uh, Pira, yeah. are you majoring in English teaching yeah English education from OP mm -hmm. okay have you graduated yeah I have I have <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so are you now a teacher? Yeah, I am a teacher um, oh. at a primary school in uh, Jakarta. So, uh, what, about you, okay. what is your uh, what do you do mm -hmm. uh, for a living now? I am an English teacher for vocational high school students. Oh, wow. the boys! Yes, the boys. I mean, but they're very challenging. <laughs> yes, yes. But if I have to choose, I will choose yours. Yes, primary, you know, full of fun. You can you can uh sing along with your students. <laughs> you can sing along with your students, and it's fun. In vocational high school is not that fun actually, but still, you know, you can yeah. learn some. Dealing with hormones and like social uh, pressure for the students are enough already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so basically, you're, you're not thinking. You're not thinking about the material, but you're thinking the psychologically are the students ready for my class? Okay. What do I have to do if the students are not ready yet? Okay. It's like juggling about management, class management, more like like that, and then thinking about the lesson. I think my from my personal experience, yeah. Yeah. It's actually it's my first year of um teaching uh young learners, but I've come to enjoy it because it's really easy to entertain them. They can basically entertain themselves. <laughs> Just ask them to draw and then they'll be busy for the next half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do agree with you. They're easy <laughs> to please, you know. I know, and yeah, the fact that they're cute uh, really, um, you know, give me energy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I also have uh, some students in primary schools. Uh, it's my private one. Uh, you know, I love it when I teach them, um, especially when they're trying to use English, uh, you know, to speak, to say something. Wow, and they can do that. I'm so happy. Yeah. And like um whenever they feel joy of learning, it's really obvious. Yeah, so it you know the, the energy uh kind of like um reflected on us. So you know we mm -hmm. uh it makes us uh to be more uh, passionate about learning as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The herd of 
education is not about whether the students uh, understand. I mean, like acquire the knowledge is not a, it, that's not the hurt of the education. It's about whether the students are enjoying the process of acquiring new experience of learning. You know, experiencing new things. Okay, oh, this is how I. I should learn something. Okay, well, let's try another thing. It's all right. Making mistake is all right. When I was a kid, you know, making mistake like a big no no. <laughs> you know, it used to it be like funny, that. Right from uh, today's um, style of teaching, uh, you know, for teachers. So, yeah, it was very different. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so, back to adults though. Uh, yeah, so I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like um, maybe uh, uh, like I've got a problem myself with uh listening. Uh, you know the true mm -hmm. and false, true false. Uh, and what is the not mentioned? Was it not mentioned? Can't forget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's one of the most challenging questions for me personally, because uh. Mm -hmm. In the way that they paraphrase uh, the answers and the text can be ve uh, very uh, different mm -hmm. and then also like um, not mention yeah it's kind of hard because mm -hmm. you need to uh, find the exact um, whether the exact information was written or maybe they paraphrase it or maybe they just mm -hmm. kind of implied it and I usually make mistakes in those kind of questions so Whenever I come to mm. that type, I usually get so much anxiety and like panicking. <laughs> Is there any tip yeah, from you? Me too. <laughs> me too. I was I was in that position. You know. Uh, I have uh, a second for a second because I I want to take my notes so I can tell something to you. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll stop the video. Oh, we've got some people already. Hi, guys. How is the FDD? Hi. Yeah. I think, Vera, I can answer it uh, directly on my DM, Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kikita, for the help. All right. Uh, we're still waiting for more people to join in from their uh, FG, uh, FGD breakout room. Okay. How was it, guys? Was it fun? <laughs> How is it, uh, Kak Reza Rifki? Uh, I think it's fun. <laughs> and uh, having the same um, uh, problems, yeah? Sharing is good uh, to know others have the same mm. obstacle, yeah? Yeah. R really re relieving. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Reza, how is it? It was fun. Oh, okay. Did you get to share your problem uh, with listening? IELTS listening as well? Um, IELTS? No, you didn't talk about IELTS. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. <coughs> Everybody is here. <coughs> now we, uh, we've, we, we have come to the representative session. Okay, so... Um, I'm gonna choose uh, several groups uh, so that they can share what they have been discussing. Uh, please don't be uh, anxious, everyone. Uh, just share uh, what did yeah, uh, your group. Yeah, no need to worry about it. How about from uh, Fasil Rahmi? Who who is your representative, Kak Rahmi? All right, thank you, Kafira. So I have two newcomers in my group, but I think I need to choose one. It would be Ka Sylvie. Ka Sylvie, are you? Uh, yeah, hi. All right. The time is yours, Ka Sylvie. Uh, yeah, we discuss about like funny things, uh, like a lot of funny things, and we discuss how our experience, uh, 
uh, when we start like uh, learning English and also how how can we increase our English, improve our English? That's really cool, and I uh really thankful for Karahmi because I have a lot of tips like uh how to be how to get uh easier the way easier like increase our new vocabulary. Yeah, that's it. I think. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sylvie. Well, we we hope that uh, you can get uh, you can use those steps to improve your English more. Yeah. Okay. And the next one from Fasil Aldi. Hello, Kafira. So yeah, we have two members in the room. They are Kadira and then Kanita. And I think I'm gonna pick. Uh, how about Kanita? Could you please like share? uh our discussion yes uh our k okay, our discussion is uh about uh learning english and we discuss uh what we like in learning english and how uh learning english we want to to follow sorry my english <laughs> yes i think we discuss about it and it is a fun discussion because i practice a lot my uh, english skills for speaking thank you all right thank you so much kanita so and also we have kadira probably kadira could you please share a little bit about our discussion yeah uh, of course like uh the, in the discussion before uh we discussed about uh how the method of learning english that we like and uh did we want to teach our children in the future any uh to speak in english since they were in the childhood or uh how uh, English method that we use uh, to learn English. Uh, we had so much fun and uh, we exchanged our thought, our, our experience. And I learned something too from Kanita and Ka Aldi. So yeah, it's, it's such a good discussion. And uh, I had a lot of uh, input in that. Thank you, Ka Aldi. Yeah, thank you so much, Kadira. Okay, Ka Safira, that's all. Thank you. All right, thank you for the sharing. Now, um, I think uh, the time is up for the representative session. Now we, uh, we are at a game session where we are going to play a very fun game. And Kak Zaki will be the leader of the game. Zaki, the time is yours. Thank you, Fira, for the opportunity. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. So, now that this is the game session, I would like to invite you to play a game called Guess the Country. I'm sure this kind of game is popular at YouTube or maybe or TikTok. So I think some of you maybe have understood the rules, but if you haven't, I will explain to you. May I share my screen now? Yes, you may. Sure. Sure, good. Hmm, hold on. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, yeah. good. So this is the game, guess the country. And the rules are, first, you will be given five facts of a country. So that you will be given some you know, information related to the country. And of course, the second rule will be, you have to guess the country based on the given facts or the information that I sh will share to you. And then you can answer immediately if you know the answer, if you think you know the answer, and then each point, 
for an for each correct answer you will get one point and this is a team game so if you answer then the point will go to your team so for example if the team is from Aldi's group and you answered it correctly and then the point will go to Aldi's group and then the winner is the team with most point simple right so are you ready or do you have any question before we start the game ready okay don't worry, this will be easy if you easier than you thought. Okay. Remember, no cheating, no googling, and so on. Okay. If you okay. want to answer, just open your mic and say the answer. And I will tell you whether it is right or not. So don't be shy, guys. Just open your microphone and tell us the answers. Hold on. Okay, I think everybody has understood the rules. Now let's go to the first country. Ready? Okay, now the first country. Country number one is that I have the biggest castle in the world. And then many people find my native language to be difficult. And then uh... my citizens can enroll in yeah who is it united kingdom yeah sorry i could not hear Great you Britain. no united kingdom sorry. german germany no. finland no. china 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 no <laughs> don't worry this is Ireland, Ireland. To... Indonesia. Ireland, no. no. England. Inland. No, this, this is the fourth, fourth fact. I was once a common And then this is the... Switzerland. 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 No. No, in fact. This is the... Russia. Poland. 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 Where's the pollen? Poland. Uh, uh, the point will go to oh pollen. Who answered pollen first? I think it's me, but I think uh, I think it's not who? me. <laughs> who from which group? From honey, honey, right? My fossil is honey. Oh. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Hanifa, 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 Hanifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's my team, Kak. <laughs> okay. One go, point go, for go, Kak go. Okay, one point for Kak Hanifa. Let's go to the second one. Hold on. Hmm, okay. I once locked myself from other countries and... I have one of the longest life expectancies in the world. Japan, 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 and Japan. 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 No, no, no. Uh, North that? Korean, North Korean. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Who said Japan first? Me, 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 me. Kaani again, Kaani again. Kenzi, you get that. Kenzi, you get that. Oh, you know. What is it, number five? Comes to this. What yeah. is it, number five? Oh, remember, thanks for the number anime. Number five, this. <laughs> I think this is the best giveaway for you guys. So, two points for Kahani's group. Yay! We are the winner. Eh, not yet. Eh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so cocky, guys. Okay. The next country is there. My capital city is very crowded. And I also have desert. Uh. And then... I am the most visited country in my area. Is it Egypt? No. Egypt? No. no. Syria? Ah. Egypt? India. 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 Africa. 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 
Saudi Arabia, Swiss, Egypt, 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 Mexico? Egypt, 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 I not said me. Mexico. Me. It's not me. I said Mexico. Oh, Kak Fika. Okay. Two points for Kahani's group and one point for Kafika's group. So yeah, you guessed it correct. Mexico. And then this will be a bit tricky. If you know this one, I will give you two points. Are you ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. The most ready. <laughs> I'm an African country, and I don't have any coastline. And one of my neighbors is a newly formed country. Huh? I am considered as the birthplace of coffee. And then I have experienced the fast economic growth over the past 20 years. Rwanda? No. Ethiopia. 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 Who said that? Kenya. Brazil. Who said Ethiopia? Yin Yin. Yin, okay. Good. It is Ethiopia. So <laughs> two points for Kahani's group, one point for Kafika's uh, group, and then two points for Kayin's group. Okay, this is your group. Kak. Uh, so Kak 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 Yin 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 is in honey, honey group. I'm not the possibility. I got four points. Yay! Yay! Is it win? Okay, can you match Kahani's group with this? Fifth country. My population is around 3 million people. And I have the longest national anthem. India? No. United States? Not million. No. Brazil, Brazil. Oh, no. Yeah. Portugal. <laughs> Uruguay, Uruguay. Yeah. <laughs> Me. Who? Who is it? Fika. America. Fika, okay. So, Pika's group has two points, right? <coughs> oh my God. Where are other fossils member? Why is it only Hanis and Pika's member? Yeah, come on, guys. This will be the second last, and I'm sure, I promise you, this will be easy. And then the six countries that, here are some facts about it. Some people forgot to include me in the world map. Palestine. Stein. I'm an archipelago. Palestine is not an archipelago. I own a native animal and a fruit which have the same name. And I have Iceland. Born... No. New Zealand. Yeah, you said New Zealand. Reza, Reza. Reza Yay! from from group Kanona. Okay, group Kanona, one point. I thought that Kareza from my group. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, different, yeah, different. No. no. <laughs> Thank you, Kareza. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good one. Good one. And then the last country is that. Here are some facts about it. Indonesia. 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 So, colors on my flag. I invented the Hawaiian pizza. And also, I have a signature syrup. What is that? Canada. Yeah, Canada. you said Canada. You uh, said Canada. From me, Nita, from Al Fasil Aldi. Okay, one point for the Aldi's group. Okay, guys, that's all from me. And the winner is Kahani's group with four points. Yeah. Where's the gift? Where's the gift? 
Ya, what's the game? Let me send through the stickers, ya. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That Please send us takjil, Kak. Ya? Send us takjil. Takjil gift. <laughs> okay, I think that's all from my game session. So, thank you guys for participating. Good job. Thank you for the game. Okay, wow, that was a very <laughs> interesting game. <laughs> okay, I think um some of you are really um fired up with the game. <laughs> Okay, if you want to um, have a more chance of playing the game, you guys can join uh, next Saturday's class. Uh, sorry, the class, uh, Saturday's class uh, Bridge, at Bridge Zone. Maybe after uh, Lebaran, we will have it uh, regularly. You guys can come to our class, yeah. All right, so I think um, after this is the closing statement from Kak Novita. Okay, um, preparing for IELTS is going to take all of your money, all of your energy, uh, all of your thing first, but for the better future. So you got to prepare for your battle, know your enemy, know yourself, practice, 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 evaluate. Uh, if you have problem with spelling, do spell. Find some words, spell them. If you have problem with numbers, you know, write some numbers, say it. So the key is practice. Practicing, evaluate, uh, evaluating your progress. That's the key. So I hope, guys, you hit the score you aim. So thank you very much for listening to uh, my thing. I hope you get some insightful thing. Okay, all right. Thank you, Kak Novita, for the closing statement. Um, so everyone, I hope uh, the class today is very useful for uh, all of us. And then we can gain uh, more knowledge about IELTS and then we can put it into practice and uh, try to get uh, the score that we're aiming for. Um, if you, uh, once again, if you guys have uh, more questions, you guys can reach Kak Novita through at Novita Lingua on Instagram. So, um, yeah, I think that's all for today. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, I'm looking forward to our next classes. So, thank you for coming. Bye. Thank you, Kak. Thank you, Kak Vira. Thank you, Kak Vira. Thank you, Kak. See you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.